Hello everybody, welcome to another update on the stock screener. Today we are going to give an update on the candy store. And let's start with this map of the world. So what is happening right now, and this is very important to understand. We have Russia, okay? Russia has a lot of commodities, including Belarus and Ukraine right now, because we have the war here. Now, this whole, you can say, continent is now being excluded from the rest of the world. So that means that all of these commodities cannot be exported anymore, right? So you have the West and you have the East. In the West, you are going to see huge inflation and skyrocketing commodities. And in the East, we are going to see massive deflation in commodities. So you have two societies now. It's called deglobalization. We are deglobalizing right now. And these people will have inflation and these will have deflation. Now, I have been talking about buying Russian commodities. So all of these commodities will be increasing for the West and probably decreasing for the East. And the East is not only Russia, it's also China, very important. China is going to buy up all of these cheap commodities from Russia. Okay, so this is going to be the deflationary continent, and this is going to be the inflationary continent, east and west. And just to give an example, in the nickel market, read this, on the macro front, the exports of nor nickel from Russia to China are likely to rise due to the US sanctions on Russia. So domestic supply tightness will ease. So they're just admitting it themselves. And this is Chinese uh, website, SMM. They are admitting that they are buying cheap nickel from nor nickel. So China is in on this. They will buy all these cheap commodities and this will be a superpower later on. They will have a high currency. The Chinese Yuan will probably go up because they will grow tremendously while the West will have hyperinflation. So that's what's going on right now. So we need to be in commodities. If you are a citizen of the West, you need to be in commodities and especially these ones. So that's what I did. The candy store is now full of commodities. So let's start with the first one, gold. So Galane Gold is actually doing pretty well. It has been going up, not, not by a lot, but um, they're doing well. And we will see what the valuations are right now. So gold has been going up to 2000 and you can see the gap is increasing. So I expect that Galani Gold will double and triple in the coming year. So that's going to be rising. So the next one is Goodfellow. That's a new one. 
very cheap valuations. And did you know that Russia also exports timber? So lumber has also gone up lately. You can see that here, it's going up. So Goodfellow will probably have a very good business. Let's take a look at the evaluation. Market cap 80 million, um, trading at half book value, PE of two. Equity is rising, so I expect that this company will keep on going higher. So that's another commodity that we have. Relic Health, that's not a commodity, but I keep this one to have a balance in the portfolio. I think this is a risk off stock because it doesn't matter if oil goes to 250, it doesn't matter if the dollar crashes, uh, Relic is just going to onboard patients and revenue will rise. So the last time we were here, and since then they have added a lot of patients, 2,000, 10,000, 2,500, 3,000. So now we are almost at uh, 400,000 patients potential. And with these calculations here, you can see that the price to EBITDA uh, potential is 1.5. So there's a lot of upsides. They just need to get these patients on board. It will take um, two to three years to do this, but uh, I'm hopeful that they are able to do this. So this is kind of a balancing uh, in the candy store. Then you have must grow. Yeah, we have a food crisis and we need to have these organic pesticides. Still waiting on the EPA approval. We don't know when it will come. Could be next year, could be this year. We don't know, but I'm waiting for that approval. And then this stock should shoot higher. Uh, so they had this uh, mustard seed organic pesticide, which is uh, much better than glyphosate. And we are just going to wait for the approval. Then we have Sierra Metals again. I bought a small position again because I saw that zinc was going up. Gold and silver is also going up, so that should benefit the earnings of Sierra Metals. Copper is uh, important. It's also a Russian commodity that we need to have. And you can see that copper is in a rising trend. Uh, also, iron ore, another export commodity from uh, Russia and Ukraine. So you need to be in all of these commodities. I bought back Sierra Metals, hoping that their operations will improve. So Sierra Metals is fair value right now, okay? But it heavily depends, of course, on the copper price can easily go to five and then you have different valuations and also the production can go up again if they can uh, fix the problems so this production should go back up to the 100 million level let's say they get 100 million then this will rise up can easily double from here Okay, so that's Sierra Metals. The next one is, of course, Verde Agritech. And I increased my position to 50% of the portfolio because this is the easiest company ever to invest in. So we have Verde Agritech here. And you can see that the valuations are very cheap still. We have a market cap of 300. And they are going to fourfold production this year. By the end of the year, they will have this capacity. So this should be an easy double, triple by next year. And 
fertilizers are going to go higher. Okay, we see Yara uh, cutting uh, their production by half. We see bans on fertilizer imports. Uh, we will get sanctions on uh, Russia. So a lot of uh, positive news for the potash market. I will see this potash price probably go higher to, let's say, 1,500. And then we get this scenario. So that's, uh, could say that this can even tenfold in a few years. And this is not going to go away. So I don't think that this Russia problem is going to go away soon. Okay. So it's very good here. We increase the position and this will probably shoot much higher. Then we have Voxter. This is just a company that has a good app. I'm just following uh, Marius here. Um, the stock has actually done very well, uh, considering that this is a tech stock. So I'm just keeping this one as a hedge to be uh, somewhat in tech. I think this will have a price to revenue of two and that's pretty cheap for a technology stock. So let's see what this do. This, um, I think it will go up 50%. Then we have Gran Colombia Gold. Yeah, you need to have at least some gold in the portfolio and this has done very well. It's gone up. And let's see the valuation. So the gold price is at 1991. Still very cheap. We are at 460. It can go to 800. So that's a double in the near term. And in two years, it will go up triple. Still below book value, PE of five. So we are not going to sell this one. I believe that this is going to $10 very soon. Then I got bought some uh, palm oil and farmland. Sipef is palm oil, and this is going to break out. So SIPF is actually a very cheap Belgium company with assets in Indonesia. Oil is going to go much higher and as well palm oil. So price to book is 1 and PE is 5.7. Palm oil, as you can see here, is shooting much higher. So that's nice position. Pipestone Energy. I wanted to buy some uh, energy stocks because I think that oil is going much higher. And Pipestone Energy is actually a very cheap company. It has uh, a PE of six and a half right now, price to EBITDA of two. And you can see here production is going to rise. It's going to rise. We are now in 2022, 32,000 uh, barrels of oil equivalent per day. And this is going to go up 20% per year. So good future. We are now at 110 oil. So by next year, we have a free cash flow of around 300 to 400 million. So price to free cash flow is around Two, very cheap. I think this can double, especially when oil rises. And I expect oil to rise a lot. Next one is Sigma Lithium. Still think that Lithium will go up. And Sigma Lithium has made an all-time high recently. Let's take a look at the valuations. So Spodimin went up to 2,700, so it keeps on rising and this gap is increasing. So Sigma Lithium should really 
start rising now. Um, it's now already a gap of 1.5 billion. So this should double easily. Okay. We are just going to keep this position and I expect this to break out soon. Alpha min. Alpha min has also made a new all time high. And yeah, let's take a look at the valuation. Now it's actually fairly valued right now. Not a lot of upside, maybe 10%, but the upside comes from the doubling of production in two years. So I believe that there's still a lot of upside when you hold this for two years. They are going to expand production on the south zone. So this is the south zone and they are operating in the north zone right now. They just released the PEA and it looked very good. So we're going to keep this. It's fair value, okay? So PE is 10, but there is upside later on. Then we have Capstone Mining, which has also made all time highs. So all of the candies in the candy store are doing very well. Let's take a look at the valuation. We are fair valued, but of course, still waiting for the doubling of production, which will come in two years from now. So there's still a lot of upside. I'm just a bit worried about the copper price right now because we are going into recession. So on one hand, you have the recession that will push down copper. But on the other hand, you have Russia that is not supplying copper anymore. So copper can be very volatile right now, but at least Capstone has a lot of production growth to come. So I expect Capstone to keep on rising and it's doing that right now. So that's copper. And then the last one is Eramet which I recently bought because we need to have nickel. Nickel is extremely important uh, with nor nickel being uh, sanctioned. So you can see Aramet is on an uptrend and is leveraged to nickel. So this is the highest leveraged company to nickel outside of nor nickel. And it's fair valued at the PE of seven and price to EBITDA of 2.6. And you can see here, this was the EBITDA for 2021. Now you need to know 2021, the nickel price was around $17,000 per ton. And today it is probably already 20, 30% higher, 40% higher. Okay, so this spike will probably go back down to here, but it's still 30 to 40% higher than last year. So that means that turnover will be 30% higher, 40% higher. And that means that this year is going to go to 400. Revenue goes up 40%, but the costs will be the same. So that will be around 400 EBITDA. And EBITDA is around 1.5 per year. So that will go to 2 billion. Uh, so that means that price to EBITDA is around two. So that's very cheap and it is leveraged to nickel outside of Russia, of course, in Indonesia.
So that's the candy store. Small updates. And we need to be in commodities right now. Okay. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.